So in this video, we're going to be calculating compound interest using a recurrence relation. Now you might already know the compound interest formula. That's not what this one is. We're going to do a recurrence relation instead. And it's actually really useful, especially if you're going to use something like Excel. So here's the question I'm going to solve. Now, just reading through it, deposit money in bank. So we're going to put some money in the bank uh, at $1,000 at 8% per annum compounding annually. So that means the bank is paying us 8% of our deposit at the end of every year. Determine how much money after four years using a recurrence relation. Okay, so we're going to uh, think about what this really means. So you're a person, and this is a bank, and you're going to put $1,000 into that bank. And at the end of every year, the bank is going to pay you 8% of whatever you put in. Now, I'm just going to visualize this and talk about it a little bit, but this isn't really what we're doing when it comes to a recurrence relation. So, at time what we call zero, time zero just means at the beginning, we have $1,000. Okay, at time one, that means after one year, we're going to have $1,000 plus 8% of $1,000. Now, the fastest way to do that is to um, multiply 1,000, by 1.08. The 0 0.08 is the 8%. 1 is the beginning of that. So I can say that uh, after this, I'm going to have 1,000 times 1 1.08, which is $1,080. Now, at time 2, I'm going to have 8% of that new balance that's in the thing. So 8% of 1,080. Now that is $1,164.40. Now, after another year, I'm going to have uh, an extra 8% on top of that. So I need to take that and multiply it by 1.08. Now I'm having to round there a little bit, but there we go. And after four years, if I take that and multiply it by 1.08, that's how much money I'll have in the bank. So 1360.49. Now what I've done there is the rough working for solving this. But I haven't used a recurrence relation to do it. And we really should use a recurrence relation. So let's set up a recurrence relation and do this properly. So a n plus 1, that's the n plus 1th term. A, a is the total amount of money in the bank. Now that's going to be equal to, now let's think about what I did. I took each term and multiplied it by 1.08. I took that times 1.08, times 1.08, times 1.08. So we've got to take each term and multiply it by what we're going to call r. So we're going to say r, which in this case was 1.08, times a to the n. Now, of course, we don't really need that times in there because we've got a variable times a variable. And so there's a neat little formula there. a n plus 1 equals r times a n. Okay, so just need to write a couple of things here. Now, the first bit's straightforward. a equals the total amount of money in the bank. Now, what about r? Well, r is equal to 1 plus the interest rate, uh, now you need to be careful about this, because the interest rate says 8%, but you should know that 8% as a decimal is 0 0.08. Now to get from 8 to 0 0.08, you divide by 100. So a lot of people like to write 1 plus i over 100. Now, um, I'm not a big fan of that. I think that you should kind of convert that first, and if you do convert it first to a decimal, then instead of writing 1 plus i over 100, you just write 1 plus i. But as long as you understand that this bit of the, of the formula is referring to the um, percentage as a decimal. All right, so I hope I've made that clear. 1 plus i over 100, or just i, whatever it is, it's the interest rate, but expressed as a decimal, not expressed as a percentage. Okay, so what the question asked us was, deposit money, blah, 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 blah. Uh, determine how much money after four years using a recurrence relation. So the way that we do it is to say a to the 1 is equal to r, which is 1 plus 0 0.08, 1 1.08 times uh, a to the 0. Now, a to the 0 is times 0. We put $1,000 in the bank and we get this. And that means that A1 is going to be 1.08 times 1,000, which you already know is $1,080.
All right, so we know what A1 is now. So we can now say that A2 is equal to 1.08 times A1, which is 1,080. All right, and that's we know is going to be one one six four dollars and forty cents. And of course, we can now say that A three is equal to R times R uh, one point zero eight times A two, which is one one six four dollars forty, and get an answer. And finally, we can say that A four is equal to one point zero eight, which is our rate times one two five nine. 0.71, that's A3, and that's going to be our final answer of 1360.49. So, what have we done? We've created a recurrence relation, uh, and then we've used that recurrence relation to calculate compound interest. Now, there is a perfectly good compound interest formula that I would argue is more efficient than this. So, why on earth would you want to do it this way? Probably the best reason to do it this way is because of spreadsheets. People in finance love spreadsheets for a very good reason. So what you can do is put a recurrence relation into a cell of Excel, and then you can drag that down, and you can find not just year one or year two or year three or year four, but you can find year one, two, three, up to a thousand really, really fast. You get a nice little list of all of your terms just like that all right so that's a great reason to be able to use a recurrence relation because in maths sometimes you don't just want a single number in the real world what you really want is a full statement of all of the numbers that will occur over time um, this happens in things like home loans a lot where you want to have how much money will the person owe every single month for a full 30 years that's that's a lot of numbers that you want. And you want that all in one single document, which is like an Excel document. And recurrence relations allow you to do that really, really easily. All right, that's calculating compound interest using a recurrence relation.